is Raz One coming at you from Long Beach from the Bradley's House podcast. Nothing is impossible, but certain things are highly improbable. I don't think I'll meet your kind again. Not in this lifetime. Hey guys, welcome back. Come on in, make yourself at home as you should when you're a guest in Bradley's house. I am your co-host, Jared Orr. She is the executive director of the Knoll Family Foundation, and more importantly today, our host, Ms. Kelly Noel. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jared. How are you? Better than I deserve, Kelly. I'm telling you. <laughs> Um, I'm out here living the dream, and uh, we're getting ready to do another amazing episode of Bradley's House. I always get excited for that anytime I get to uh, hang out and chat with you, and then you always set up these amazing guests for us and the listeners, and today is no different. Kelly, who's our house guest today? Today we have someone that I think it's safe to say we're all super excited about. I know Anna, our producer, is thrilled. I know you and I are stoked. Today we have a gentleman who plays the bass guitar and does vocals for Mad Caddies, who, this is my favorite thing, they are ska, punk, reggae, jazz, Dixieland, and sea shanties. We have Graham Palmer with us today. Graham, thank you so much for being on the show. No problem. Thanks for having us. I love the the sea shanties thing. We, I think <laughs> I we've got maybe like I, I think we've got maybe one or two of those types of songs, but I know it's on the Wikipedia. So yeah, we're oh. we'll own it. Hundred well, percent. I'm all about it because my oldest son got into sea shanties during COVID, and he was like listening to them constantly. And so That's I'm awesome. like, well, you like sea shanties? Check out this. And he was cool. he was stoked. So yeah, that that's a legit thing in my household. Oddly enough. That's great. But yeah, yeah, I I love that you guys are so varied, and I think that that's what what people love so much about the Caddies is that you guys have such a diverse sound, you know, because there's so many bands that kind of stick in their genre, you know, in the lines of of what they're expected to do. But but you guys are kind of known for doing the unexpected. I think that's awesome. Yeah, we appreciate that, and and I think that that's something that since the band started, we've always tried to do. We certainly are a ska punk band, and we're completely happy with that but we've always tried to introduce other genres or or experiment with things sometimes they've worked sometimes they haven't and uh you know um it, it's been fun so potentially at times we've shot ourselves in the foot over it because we're not <laughs> ska punk enough you know but um uh it's it's yeah it's it's a fun ride and it's that's what keeps us interested in it 27 years in is still still trying to try something different on the next Absolutely. record or, or whatever you know where do the different sounds come from is it just whoever's kind of thrown out ideas for songs says hey let's try some jazz or hey let's throw in some dixieland yeah i think so uh, i originally in the, you know in the early days sasha had sasha our guitar player and he's always mm -hmm. credited as playing banjo as well and he does sometimes live as well but uh, on records for sure i think the that sort of dixieland thing um came from sasha early on and then as we became known for that and, and experimenting with different things i think we've just tried all sorts of different stuff and as the band has gotten older and, and had members come in and out and those types of things i think uh with all the different influences and all the different songwriters it just sort of manifested itself naturally you know I love it. And while we're on the topic, for the house that Bradley built, you guys covered new song, and you mm -hmm. totally gave it a Dixieland vibe. We did. Um, that was a really fun project for us, and you know, we we were honored to be asked to do it. And that it's such a such a fun song, the original version. But mm. of course, uh, you know, we we wanted to to make it a little bit caddies. So um, that tune in particular, we all sort of arranged together, but um, Sasha and Todd, actually our drummer, um, really worked hard on the arrangement to, to give it its own feel, you know? That's fabulous. It was definitely one of the standouts on the album for me. Just so, I, it's so great when you hear a song reinterpreted and yet, you know, still so fabulous and so, um, so in the caddy style, 
but yet still paying homage to the original song. It was great. And thank you guys for doing that, by the way. Of course. I mean, thanks for asking us again. It was, it was a fun project for us. And, you know, it's kind of funny. We had just, well, not just, but a year or so prior to being asked to do that, our most recent recording was a cover album that we did with Fat Mike. We we did some old punk songs and made them reggae. Mm. So we were already kind of in that mode of, well, let's take this song we love and try and change it up and both do it justice and make it our own at the same time. Right. So when we got asked to do this project, it's like, yeah, we're we're a cover band. That's what we do. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, is that and the we album know- where you- we know there was no Sublime songs on Fat Mike's cover album project. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> there was not, you know, and, and not, oh. not to go on a, on, a, on a tangent, but we love Mike. He's, you know, he's, we've been on Fat Records forever and he's family and really a large part of why we have a career. But uh, deciding the songs and what bands we were going to do uh, was was tough, you know, and we'd even bring, bring up a band like the Ramones, you know, like, well, we we can't do a, a punk album and not have a Ramon song on it. And Mike would be like, "Yeah, you know they're not really punk." And you know, okay, fine, <laughs> that's cool. Um, he, he's got a he's got his own version of uh, of of what punk is. And believe me, he's right. He's my, Mike's a smart guy and he knows what he's doing. But yeah, we that that was a fun discussion figuring out which bands we were going to cover, and then beyond that, you know, what songs from those bands. So yeah, is that the album where you guys covered Sorrow? Uh, yes, it is. Yep, yeah, exactly. That was a great one. I love that. That was that. Thank you. Uh, that was one of the tougher ones to do on the album for sure. And that's, you know, Mike was the producer on that record, and that was one of the more collaborative uh, songs on it, and one that he had had a big hand in. And he's such a big Bad Religion fan to begin with. Mm. So yeah, we we had to tread lightly with uh, any Bad Religion song <laughs> we covered. You know, right. <laughs> Now you guys are from, is it considered central California up there? Yeah. C- central okay. coast. So any, central anything coast. from Ventura, Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties are all what, uh, what we call the central coast. So yeah, we, most of us grew up just outside of Santa Barbara in the San Inez Valley where Solvang and Buellton is. And, um, you know, everybody lives in different places now, but yeah, that, that's where the band originated. Nice. So we grew up taking road trips with our mom up north. And I mentioned this to you before, whenever I hear Buellton, I think of Pea Soup Anderson's because literally every time we would drive up, we would stop in Buellton at Pea Soup Anderson's for obviously Pea Soup. But it was such a huge part of my childhood. And I, I didn't realize that that's where you guys were from. I was That was really cool to find that out. So no, that's yeah, cool. but I, I were up in your neck of the woods quite a bit. That, that's awesome. When, when you mentioned that in the email, it's like that, that, that's so cool. It's this, it's a small town here and especially, you know, 20 plus years ago and you guys are coming up here is even smaller. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, P. Soup Anderson's is, is about a mile or even less, maybe three quarters of a mile oh my from gosh. my house now where my wife and my baby daughter live. And yeah, it's, oh my it's still a staple. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the email, but it just actually sold. And <gasps> I mean, there was an article in like the Washington Post about it. It's like, God, oh, is, yeah, this, it's big news. is that is that news? <laughs> like, Jesus. That is big news. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was so, very generous of here. you to say yeah. 20 plus years ago, but we're talking like 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, we're not all just going to skip over that, are we? <laughs> no, I'm not going to okay. let that go. I, I, I try to be gentle when I'm talking I about uh, how old we all are. Yeah. You're a wise man. <laughs> very good. <laughs> So yeah. what was it like growing up in that area? So uh, I, I'll say, and we've always said this, that it was a great place to grow up if you were if you were playing music, if you were a kid, mm. you know, with a guitar or a drum set. It's it, it these days it's adult Disneyland. There's 300 wineries. There, you know, it's restaurant. It's a tourism wow. hub, and 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 it was in those days as well. But for us growing up, you know, obviously it's all we knew, but. From very early on, from fifth, sixth grade, whether or not you took, some of us took music lessons as kids, some of us didn't, but by fifth or sixth grade, you were jamming with with buddies in barns and guest houses because, you know, there, there, there's space to do that up here. And, and you know, in, our first shows were at somebody's ranch or somebody's horse, you know, barn or something like that and that that's just how we grew up so we we grew up in an area where you were able to make loud noise uh Mm. and you know really sort of 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it was for that. It was, it, it was pretty cool. Other than that, it was a small town and you know, it's, it's a nice area. We, a, a number of us still live here or, or still have family here. So, you know, it's, it's a good spot. We're, we're from Santa Barbara County. That's for sure. And I think it shows. Yeah. When did you guys, well, when did you particularly start playing? Uh, I, my mom was a music teacher, so I was, I was playing, playing instruments pretty young. I was playing piano and violin, at like four and five years old. Not that I was wow. any good at it, but, but, <laughs> but they, I, was, I was just exposed to it, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I think I, I, I've said this a lot, but I think my parents were very good at exposing me to instruments and music, but not forcing it. So it was always something I enjoyed and not something I had to do. And, um, I, I teach a, a little bit now. Yeah, exactly. And I teach now and I have a daughter and I, I try to, to continue that because as much as I, I mean, music's just such a big part of my life and always will be, um, as a teacher and an instructor, I want it to be fun for people and, and fun for kids and something that's, that's, you know, that they enjoy because that's really what music is for all of us, right? Whether we're listening to it or playing it, it's, it's a gift, you know, that we've been given. So let's, let's enjoy it. And, uh, I, I definitely had friends growing up that, that quit, you know, that were very good, you know, maybe better than mm. me at certain instruments, but quit because, you know, they didn't want to, they wanted to go skateboard or something like that, which is also awesome. And I did that as well, but, um, music should be uh, something that we all enjoy. So I, I try to continue that philosophy. Absolutely. So you say your mom was a music teacher. Did she teach at a local school or where did she teach? She taught here. Yeah, she, a, a number of places. I, I was born in LA or Pasadena and we, we lived oh. there in my early childhood and she was a piano teacher and a uh, school teacher there. And then we moved up here and, and she did sort of the same thing uh, back in the day when music was a thing in public schools, right? Right. When you <laughs> like it's not, that. it's, it's not that way anymore at all. Uh, it's, uh, you know, clearly, but, uh, yeah, she she taught at local public schools here, and um, you know, always had a piano in her classroom, even if she was just a fourth grade teacher. You know, I'll still run into kids in, in my hometown that don't know or remember who I was, but like, oh yeah, I remember your mom. She would play us, you know, <laughs> Beatles songs on the piano. It's like, yeah, yeah, that was, that was my mom. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's totally. cool. That's really cool. Our mom's a piano teacher, also never a school teacher, but piano teacher out of her home. That's Small awesome. World. Yeah. So yep. the caddy started in 95. Is that right? Yep. 95, uh, at, at San Inez high school. And, and um, when did you join? I didn't join until the mid two thousands. Uh, I was a little bit younger than the rest of the guys. Uh, but I, I grew up here and grew up with them. So the very first mad caddy show ever I was at like as a kid and, and a fan really? and just as, Todd and I, the, the original drummer of the Caddies, Todd, is a few years older than I, and he was younger than the rest of the guys when they started. Uh, but he and I grew up, you know, friends since we were five. So I was at those original shows and, you know, was a fan of the band before I actually joined. And, you know, of course, I, I went to university at UCSB and, and other things while they were sort of cutting their teeth on the road and um, had my own bands, you know, and played in Santa Barbara and all that type of stuff. But uh, was always a caddies fan and friends with those guys. And at one point the bass job sort of opened up and I wasn't even really a bass player. I played piano and guitar and drums, but it's like, yeah, sure. I can, I can learn these bass lines and, uh, you know, <laughs> that's, what need, are, that's what you'll do. Huh? It's, it's, totally. And and that's the thing. It's like, yeah, bass players and drummers are always kind of needed. Um, and you know, I, I love to travel and the caddies, one thing about them, they've had you know, we, we, we go a lot of places. They've had good success in Europe and uh, yeah. a lot of other places. So for me, it was a, a cool opportunity to, you know, take a job and, and, and join a band that uh, I could travel around with. And they were obviously all old school friends. So it was a pretty easy decision when the opportunity came up. You guys tour a lot. Well, we certainly used to well, for pre <laughs> before we couldn't right, anymore. Right. And, and, you know, uh, it, it, it sort of always goes in waves. Like if we've released an album and we're touring on an album cycle, we'll play a hundred plus shows in a year. But wow. there have been a number of years where I've been in the band where we, you know, kind of had a break type of year and we'll go play a couple festivals in the summer in Europe. And that's kind of it. So some, some years we've played, like 10 shows. And, and then some years, yeah, we played, you know, 130 or something like that. But we, we, we do, we, we, tour, we try to make them shorter these days. Um, 
you know, people are married, have kids, all this stuff. So we, we don't go out for much longer than two or three weeks at a time, but uh, we still enjoy it. And <laughs> amazingly, we still enjoy each other's company for the most part. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we still enjoy doing. That's remarkable. I mean, you have that many guys in the band and have been together that long and, you know, that kind of a touring schedule. It's really impressive that you guys can all manage to still get along after all this time. We do. Uh, not that there haven't been some uh, late night tour bus blow ups for sure, <laughs> sure but uh, sure. you know, um, yeah, we're, and I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that the core members of the band, Chuck, the singer, Sasha, the guitar player, Todd, the drummer, um, myself now, uh, you know, we all grew up together. We've known I, Sasha and I were taking guitar lessons together when I was wow. six and he was, you know, oh. eight or whatever. So we, Oh my gosh. We're, I guess maybe he was nine or 10, but still, um, we've known each other a long time. So through all of each of our individual flaws and, and beef with each other, you know, we can still make it work. That's amazing. That's really impressive. I know that that's a challenge with a lot of bands. Especially, it is. You know, and especially, yeah. we, you know, there's, there's seven of us, you know, playing. Right, most that was of the time. exactly, <laughs> you know, and yeah, horn that's players a and all this stuff, plus our crew. And yeah, it's, it, it's trying at times, but uh, you know, we, we love playing music and we'll do so as long as we're able to. That's awesome. Well, I know we're all super stoked that you guys still are. I mean, 25 years is a long time for a band to be around, but um, you know, the guys have so many loyal followers that really appreciate the fact that you guys, you know, are still making music and still putting stuff out. And, um, and that's, I don't know, it's to your credit for sure. Yeah, we uh, we need to remind ourselves that sometimes, but yeah, it, sure. it is it is for yeah. sure. And you've done so, some side projects too, right? All of us do. Yeah, um, I, I I've got a couple. You know, again, I've uh, I've had my own band for forever, and uh, you know, never really gone anywhere. But I love writing music and, and putting stuff out, so I'm going to continue to do it. Um, I, I have a, a few different little projects. Uh, Chuck's got a solo project. Our drummer Todd has solo projects. Sasha, our guitar player, is always working on stuff. Uh, our trumpet player Mark is playing in the Dirty Heads now. Um, yeah, we, we we all we we is as busy as we are as a band. We're you know none of us ever want to stop. So uh, even if we're not playing together, we're playing somewhere. That's great. That no, I got I got to ask because it's something that I think about a lot, and one of the things that I love and respect uh, about the Caddies is one of the same things that I love and respect so much about Sublime is that um, you guys kind of refuse to fall into a single genre. You guys play the kind of music that you want to play, and listening through to a set. There's so many different sounds. Again, we talked punk and ska and all that. Have you ever had somebody try to sit you guys down and say, you need to focus on one of these type genres and just go for it? Do you get a lot of grief from fans that bitch that you're not punk enough or not ska enough? How do you deal with trying to please so many people at once? That's a great question. And I think we're all still trying to figure it out, you know, 27 years in. But, uh, you know, the easy answer is yes. We we hear all, you know, Mike's been, Fat Mike, again, has been very supportive of, of us and all of our different styles over the years. But we're on a punk label, right? So, you know, we, we there, there always needs to be a little bit of element of that. And a, a lot of our releases that, you know, yeah, sure, sure. There's a bunch of Fat Records fans that have always said, uh, oh, this this new stuff's not punk enough. And, you know, that's fine. I mean, we can still write a punk tune and we usually put one or two on a record, but for us, you know, we, we want to do things that we're interested in as well. So it is a bit of a struggle to, to balance what we want to do, what our fans expect, but that's kind of art, right? Not that, you know, we're not amazing artists or anything, but we're, we're out here trying to do our own thing and be expressive and, and, uh, and, and produce things. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, we hear all the time, especially from fans and uh, German fans in particular, you know, this, uh, <laughs> this new record, it's not fast enough. You know, we need more punk, more fast punk. So yeah, we, we hear that a lot and uh, we love playing our fast songs, but we're going to always evolve. That's the reason we're still around. You know, the reason we can still play with each other. 
Can I just tell you how amazing that accent was? It's kind of like the fucking <laughs> highlight of my day so far. I just yeah. Want to, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> well, I'll say that I probably have the third best German accent in the band. <laughs> and nice. Maybe second. Ch- Ch- Chuck's pretty good at it, but spend a lot of time there. We hear a lot of Germans tell us uh, what they want us to do. So, um, yeah, Ger- Germany's been good to us, and it- it's a great place. We have a lot of friends there, and our European booking agent is there. So, yeah, we're in non-COVID times. We're there all the time. Sure. That's uh, Germany is an awesome place. I've, I've been there myself. So it's, uh, it's crazy that, you know, like Kelly mentioned, you guys have a very loyal following of, of fans. And I'm sure a lot of that goes with the longevity that you guys have been able to for so long, continue to put stuff out and you're constantly out there touring. Um, but I, you know, for, for a band that just touches so many different genres, um, you know, to have such a, a strong loyal following, it's certainly got to be something that you guys are uh, are extremely grateful for. Absolutely, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but we we would not be anywhere without our fans and their loyalty and all that. And that that's just the truth. And we've had, you know, Europe's been good to us. I mean, we we play a lot of places in the states as well. But just in my my career, my tenure in the band. Um, we, we play a lot in Europe and they're, they're good to us. And, and um, for us, it's always about going to the next place or really we're all, we, we, we like to travel and we like to go meet new people and, and, and play music for anybody that's interested. So yeah, it's, it's been a big part of it for us. And we're, we're very, very grateful and very thankful for anyone that's ever put on a caddies record. Where is uh, where would you say outside of your your hometown, your home area there in in California, is there like a, another spot, whether it be in the states or in Europe, that's just like crazy caddy country? Like you guys circle it on the calendar, like this fucking show is going to be nuts. <laughs> caddy yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's it, it, it's Germany. There, there's a lot of Europe. Um, Vienna, Austria, too, is always a banger on a tour. We'll, our last big tour, big headlining tour in 2019 after the last record, we close in Vienna. Like We, we always know that that's going to be a, a banger. So Berlin, Vienna, Munich, uh, Hamburg, uh, the, a lot of the Germanic-speaking cities. Uh, uh, the UK, too, for sure. Um, and then as far as the States, you know, we're kind of on the coasts. We play a lot in mm. California, do pretty well in California, um, East Coast as well. And then, you know, not as much in the middle. It's not that we don't love all of the fans that we have in the middle of the country, but, it, you know, 25, 27 years in, we know where where it works for us, right? It, it's so, um, yeah, the easy answer, Germany, Austria, That's those are our, usually our biggest shows. And we've done well at the festivals there. You know, we, we, we play some festivals in the States, but um, – a lot of the, you know, we played a lot of the big German festivals, Southside Hurricane, um, you know, big, bigger festivals that are outside just the punk genre, you know, so you'll be playing with Kendrick Lamar or... Um, Hasselhoff. You know, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> we, we've talked about that a lot. No, you're right, for sure. <laughs> you haven't really played with Hasselhoff, have you? No, we have not, but we get that, you know, it's like, yep, we're big in Germany, just like David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy. Yeah. Like, did you ever think when you started that that you would be huge in, in some European countries? I mean, that's got to be pretty impressive. It, it's it's fun, and, and no, I don't think so. And by the time I joined the band, we already kind of had a decent following there. But no, I think, it, you know, it, when the band started, they thought it would be cool to play a show in L.A., you know, like just a show, you know, there, there wasn't any thought to like, we can have a real career in Europe or anything like that. Right. On the other side um, of the country. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's been fun for all of us. And, you know, honestly, I mean, music, (laughs) music's a global, global thing. And um, it's fun to, to see all these different shows in different places and, and, and compare them all and different fans and different venues and different policies and all of this stuff. And, yeah. We've really, we've really missed it in the, in the last couple of years. We took a year off before the pandemic started oh, no. after our, our album cycle for punk rock steady, the cover record, we took a year off and then 2020 was our 25th anniversary. So we had a huge world tour planned. We played the first show in Orlando in February. 
And then we're driving to our next tour with Flogging Molly, you know, March 15th, 2020, whatever it was when, when, the, oh, when everything shut down. So yeah, we, we had, a, and I, you know, everybody's sick of talking about the pandemic. We don't need to bring it up too much, but 25th anniversary for us, we had a lot planned and, and it didn't happen, but uh, mm. Hey, things were a lot worse for a lot of other people. So if that's True. our biggest complaint, you know, yeah. we're, we're doing all right. That's true. But it has been a big adjustment for a lot of people. And I think especially people in the music industry, because you don't have the option to, you know, go out and do anything. Have you guys been doing any live streams or anything? We didn't. Um, we, we recorded some stuff, you know, we did some things remotely. Um, we, you know, everybody had the studio work or some other things that they did, but we had a couple of live streams planned. Um, both of them didn't work out for various reasons. The one was rearing and ready to go, but it was November of 2020 and we were going to do it in our hometown and California was just going back down on extreme lockdown. So we, yeah. we just, we, we shut it all off and um, it would have been nice to do something like that. And uh, we tried to do our best to stay engaged with fans and, and put music out and, you know, be online and all that type of stuff. But no, we didn't do a live stream or anything like that. Yeah. Um, what are some of your influences? Like you personally, what are some artists that influenced you? So, you know, again, growing up with, uh, with my mom as a piano teacher, I, I always say that my religious music is the Beatles, uh, that their, their whole catalog is just something that <laughs> your religious I, music. I, I, it's it for my whole life that whether I'll go through phases where I'm listening to nothing but the Beatles and then I'll go through years where I don't really kind of listen to them and then I'll go back to them. Um, I, wow. they're, they're, I mean, the kinks, um, mm. I, I always kind of gravitate towards older music. Um, I mean, not, not just to say this cause I'm on this show, but for all of us, sublime was a major influence on, on us and our sound and the scene that we were trying to become a part of that already existed wow. b because of uh, Bradley and, and sublime and, and all that um you know i i i studied music in college so i i listened to chamber music and classical music and all sorts of stuff and i i personally always say that there are excellent representations of every genre and horrible representations of every genre so it's best to and now my daughter's three and a half months old so i'm kind of new to this mm -hmm. father thing but exposing her to music is a really important thing to me yes. and sort of navigating those waters and what's important. I, I, right. I'm going to try trying to continue that with every genre has good music and every genre yeah. genre has bad music. So it's, <laughs> it's finding the, the gems in that. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's really answers your question, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I try to be as all over the place as I can. Sasha in the caddies is a great, Exam he introduces us to all sorts of South American music, all, you know, Cuban oh. music, all of the, you know, he's, he's the guy in the band that if I'm listening to, you know, the new Daft Punk record or something that's on the radio, <laughs> yeah. he's like, yeah, well, check out this Cuban guy from the sixties that you've never heard of. You know, he's always got awesome. the, the, un the unique stuff. So great it, friends to that, have. I love that guy. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, seriously. Um, it's, it, it, it's the best. And I think that we're, with you know six seven dudes in the band a uh, lot of influences a lot of a lot of uh different perspectives and some of it's pop some of it's rock some of it's hip hop some of it's you know classical some of it's obscure south american music we we try and run the gamut and i think that's contributed to the caddies even before i joined to to being pretty diverse and trying to work with yes. a lot of genres you know you'll Absolutely. find that being a parent is going to uh, is going to change your music what you listen to quite a bit, maybe not necessarily for you, but I know for me, you know, growing up, I listened to a lot of everything. Um, and I used to be the guy that was like, I'll, I'm going to be the old man in my minivan still listening to rap music. Like I just, yeah, totally. I like rap music and I'm just never not going to like this. And then like, you know, me and the boys are headed to the store and I, you know, pop in an old CD from 97 and it's, you know, first off, fuck your bitch. And, the, and I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to be listening to Tupac hit him up today. Uh, I wonder what they've got on the Disney channel on XM. 
And uh, <laughs> no, I get, I, so I totally it's uh, it, it, it's definitely taken a, a, a whole element out of my uh, – as far as my kids are concerned, Sublime only sings Hong Kong Fooey, and they haven't heard <laughs> any yeah. much else. So um, – but, you know, being a parent is uh, – it's great, but it's going to – it's going to change things a little bit. You'll see. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. And I'm taking this whole parent thing all in stride and I'm loving every minute of it so far. Every minute of it, Graham? It's we're, on, we're, we're on, Okay, there we go. We're honest. <laughs> yeah. We're honest here, man. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah you're, it, right. Babies, you're right. Babies babies are t- babies are tough, but it is uh, it is extremely, extremely rewarding. Now, how old did you say your, your child is? She's three and a half months. Three and a half months. So have you started mm-hmm. thinking about like tour plans and what that's going to look like? Are you now no longer as excited to get back out there or are there plans to bring mama and the baby along or how's that going to work? Uh, I think sort of all of that. Um, we've got a couple of the caddies have a couple shows coming up in the next few months, but they're all sort of one off just just weekend gigs um you know saturday night type of things relatively close to home um i i wouldn't be willing to go out on a 4 to 6 week tour right now but we've already been navigating these waters with everybody's lives and stuff so no i i think i, I want to pl- i'm not going to stop playing music and you know there there's no way of that but i'm not looking forward to spending a night away from my baby girl in a couple of weeks you know um, but I, I absolutely, as far as getting, uh, my wife, Rachel and my daughter Edie to come to a couple shows. Yeah. We're talking about it. Uh, I don't think it'll be one of these first few, but next year, you know, if the world's opened and we're going to play some big festivals in Europe. Yeah. That sounds great to bring my wife and daughter. Um, and you, we've got some things in Australia and New Zealand planned and like, okay, cool. Well then I can plan a little vacation with my wife and daughter in New Zealand when my daughter's one and a half and uh, that type of thing. So yeah, I, I, na- you know, blending it all, I think is going to be, be the key for sure. Well, I don't know a ton about Australia, but from what I've heard, watch out for those dingoes with your baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the excellent reference there. Love it. <laughs> oh my God. I do what I can. Horrible. <laughs> nah, nah, it's all good. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Graham. We really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And um, like I said, we've all really been looking forward to it. Um, it just so happens that our producer and Jared and I are all uh, Mad Caddies fans. So I was thrilled to have you on the house that Bradley built and stoked to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was fun. It was nice talking to you guys. And uh, yeah, we appreciate the support. Now, Graham, before we let you go, um, go ahead and let all of our listeners, although I'm sure they're all very familiar with you already, but just in case, um, where can they check out the Mad Caddies? You got social media, websites, YouTube pages, anything you want to plug, man, here's your opportunity. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, we have all that stuff. Madcaddies.com is the easiest. It's got a list of our upcoming shows for this year. Uh, we're playing a little camp out in Northern California in a couple weeks. Uh, we're playing Vegas for punk rock bowling at the end of the month. We're playing a Halloween show in Denver. All that's on madcaddies.com. And uh, uh, we're fairly active on Instagram, Mad Caddies Official. Uh, our YouTube's Mad Caddies Official as well. And uh, you can find our uh, the lyric video that was done for a new song on Mad Caddy's official, which was awesome. Uh, that that was really well done, and we had a blast doing that song. So yeah, if if anybody listening hasn't hasn't heard that or hasn't checked it out yet, please do. Oh, it's fun. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It really is. Thanks. It's so wonderful, and I think it's a it's a great um, example of of what you guys are capable of too. So I think it's a it's a wonderful introduction. One of my favorite things about the house that Bradley built was the fact that. People have been introduced to so many different artists that they weren't aware of before. So hopefully, if there are actually any of our listeners who have not heard of Mad Caddies before, hopefully it will give them an opportunity to check you guys out and enjoy a lot of the music that you guys have. Yeah, cool. That's great. Right on. Well, thanks again. We sure appreciate you. Uh, We appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. And uh, this was fun. Appreciate it. Thank you, man.
Well, Kelly, again, I know we say it all the time, but I really do get excited about getting to talk to, to some of these musicians. And uh, being a Mad Caddies fan, obviously Anna's a huge Mad Caddies fan. I know you're a big fan. This was a lot of fun to, to have this episode and, and to have Graham come on and chat with us. It was. It was fun for all of us. And, you know, I've always thought that everybody knew Mad Caddies all across the country. And um, I'm finding out that there's a lot of people that aren't as familiar with them. And so hopefully this will be a great way for people to check out their music and, and get to know them because they are so talented and such a wide range of sounds. And, um, you know, like Sublime, that is something that always attracts me is when you have a wide variety of sounds from one band. So hopefully people will check them out. And of course, they've got some shows coming up September 18th. They'll be at the Happy Pines Campout in Northern California. And September 26th, they're playing the Punk Rock Bowling After Party in Las Vegas. So if you're anywhere on the West Coast, make sure you check those guys out. They're like the fucking Beatles in Germany. <laughs> they're, they're huge there. So I don't know. It's uh, they are huge in Germany, which is good. Which is That's good. right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> They're out there. So, guys, we hope you had as much fun uh, with Graham and, and talking with him as we did. Um, and do you know why we're doing this, guys? And it is to raise awareness for the Knoll Family Foundation and to get the funds to get Bradley's house up and built. Now, each week we talk about lots of ways that you guys can get involved. You can visit the org. You can hit the link right there in the description of the show. Kelly, in case you didn't realize, I was pointing to it. That's that right there that that's was me. i like the sound yes. effect yeah, yeah so okay. so so for everybody that's watching the show you can just go ahead and uh right there in the description <laughs> there's a link tree set up it'll get you to all of the places that you can help out and kelly we actually have a little bit of a, a special announcement we started talking about it a little bit but there's even another way that people can get involved and help out with a special event that you've been setting up right absolutely we have our very first auction coming up September 22nd through 29th. It's going to be an online auction and uh, it'll go up for preview. The site will go up for preview on September 20th. Then the auction will go live on the 22nd, running till the 29th. We've got lots of really great stuff. People have donated things. We've got some memorabilia. We've got some merch packages. We've got some instruments, all kinds of stuff. So um, definitely encourage people to stay tuned to our socials and we'll be releasing the link for that very soon. I am so excited. I'm excited to see a lot of these prizes that are going to be donated off and um, auctioned off. I haven't seen all of them, but I have seen some of them. And guys, there is some very exciting stuff out there. Whether you're a, a fan of Sublime or just a fan of the music scene in general, you guys can hop in there, pick up some awesome stuff, and all of the proceeds are going to go to getting Bradley's house up and built. So make sure you keep an eye on the social medias. It's the Noel Family Foundation absolutely everywhere. Go ahead give them a follow uh, and make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast. Now, if you pick this link up because I shared it somewhere on social media or one of your friends shared it and you just listened to this interview, you need to go ahead and click that subscribe button because there could be some big shows coming up and you won't know about them unless you're subscribed. So hit that subscribe button, go ahead and like and share, give us the five stars. If we haven't earned it, we're gonna earn it. Just click the five stars, it's for charity people doing the best we can here. Um, <laughs> so um, we hope that uh, we hope that you guys are enjoying the show, like I said, as much as we're enjoying doing it. And make sure you're following those socials so you guys can be kept up to date on all the exciting things that are going on with the Noel Family Foundation. Now, Kelly, every single week we do the same thing. We leave the listeners with an amazing song. And it's usually off of that incredible compilation, The House That Bradley Built. And it's going to be no different this week, right? Absolutely. And just to remind everybody, the compilation is still available at law-records.com. Our wonderful friends at Law Records made that available. And um, there's still some, some CD sets left. I believe there's still some t-shirts left and some digital downloads. So definitely head over there and check it out. And we're going to leave you with Mad Caddy's awesome cover of New Song. All right, guys, thank you so much again for joining us in Bradley's house. Remember to like and subscribe, share with a friend. Until next time, I'm Jared Orr, she's Kelly Noel, and we are out of time. 
heard that payback's a motherfucking bitch. I won't stress and I won't switch, and I would not take my life. Go ahead, please, my God. The only thing on my mind, well, it takes up all of my time, and I say. God, it hurts to get so low. Search it through the cars, go to search it through the night. And I think I'll run to you, but I refuse to fuss and fight. God may find a reason, but I'm sure you'll find a rhyme. Cause it takes up nearly all my time. Sitting in that bar, sitting in that stolen car, caught you rolling down the boulevard. Saw you with the gleam and that microphone scene. Think I'll run to you, but I know I won't live for me. But I know God's got the reason, and I know I've got the rhyme. Tell me why He takes up all my time. I won't stress and I won't blast, and I would not take my life. Glory, please, my God, coming from heaven above, well, it takes up all of my time. And I say, But I just wanna be the same. 